True Man Podcast. I'm Ed Blonsky. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to share with you a, a look at a message that was based on Genesis chapter 22 that I used in a recent worship service. And it was inspired by a book I read a few years ago by Leonard Sweet called Out of the Question, Into the Mystery. A large part of this book is his exploration of Genesis chapter 22, which is the story of Abraham and Isaac and God telling Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. I don't know if you've ever heard that story or not, but basically uh, Isaac was Abraham and Sarah's only son together, and he was a son of promise that God made to Abraham was nearly 100 years old and Sarah was 90 years old and on top of that was barren, could not have children. And yet Isaac is born and Isaac is about 14 years old at this time and God asks Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac at a place that I'm going to show you. And it's about a three days journey. It's actually Mount Moriah in Genesis 22, it's uh, described as that, named as that. And the tradition is that that actually is in Jerusalem today. It is the um, the mount on which the temple uh, was built, and today would be the Dome of the Rock, the Islamic Mosque, is at that place. And so Abraham gathers together wood and a few servants and Isaac and starts traveling. It's about a three days journey, according to the account in Genesis 22. And they make it to that place, and Abraham leaves everyone behind except Isaac and the wood for the sacrifice. The idea here is that Isaac will be a uh, burnt offering to God. That's how Abraham will answer God's call for him to sacrifice Isaac. And that is the mystery. Why would God do that? What's actually behind this request of God? Uh, with Abraham and Isaac, and that's what I wanted to explore today on the True Man podcast. Let me start by telling you a story of another man. This man was adopted, and he knew he was adopted, and he loved his adopted parents very much, but he always knew that somewhere out there was a person who didn't want him. He mentions that in later uh, biographies uh, that are made about him. And this man spent the rest of his life seeking relationships in everything he did. In his early 20s, he and a friend started a small business in his parents' garage. And while the first couple of years was about the business and making money, it quickly evolved into something more. He began to see that his business was not about making things and making money, but more about establishing relationships relationships between people and the products his company made. So to further establish this relatively new business model in America, he went to find a CEO for his Growing by Leaps and Bounds company. And he found who he felt was the right person for that role. And this is how he pitched the idea to him. Do you want to sell sugar water for the rest of your life, or do you want to come with me and change the world? You probably know who I'm talking about now. Steve Jobs brought on the CEO of Pepsi, John Scully, to further establish Apple Computer as a company that is all about relationships. There's a lot more to this story, of course, and it's a fascinating story, at least it is to me, but to make this long story short, Jobs and Apple ushered in a new era of American business, establishing a relationship between customers and products. Funny thing is that this is the model that Jesus used to start the church. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Baptism is truly a personal thing. You're holding the child that you're baptizing, or you're there with the 
person, the adult who is being baptized, and pouring water on their heads, you're close to them, you're intimate with them. And that relationship between the disciple and the teacher, Jesus, and then the relationship between the disciples of the teacher, Jesus. And there's nothing more personal than Jesus when he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is how you change the world and you save the world by this personal relationship with Jesus and with brothers and sisters in the Christian faith. Okay, we don't save the world. Jesus does. Jesus was born to take our place under God's law because we couldn't keep the law perfectly. He kept it perfectly for us and gives us his perfection, his holiness, his righteousness in place of our sins through his life. His death forgives all our sins. His resurrection assures us that even though we die and are buried or cremated and inured, we will come back. We will come back to life. He will raise us from the grave. And Jesus ascended into heaven with the promise that he would come back to take us to be with him forever in paradise. He did all of this for us. And this is what saves the world. This is the gospel. But Jesus calls you and I as Christians to participate in his work. We are in relationship with Christ and with others. How do we do this to save the world? Well, it has less to do with answering questions and more with embracing the mystery. But maybe I'm getting a little out of order here. Before we get out of the question and into the mystery, we need to understand how we got here. And this helps us find the truth that the world does indeed need saving. The reason is because we are stuck with questions. Because our fall into sin began with a question. Genesis 3.1, the serpent says to Eve, Did God actually say? And you know what? We have been questioning God ever since. That's what sin is. It is questioning God's goodness God's purpose for our lives, and God's providence over us and the world. So we're stuck in the questions, but our salvation is not through answers, but through a mystery. To save the world, we need to step out of the questions and into the mystery. Uh, This can be hard, especially for those Christian denominations who learn about their faith through questions. In my particular tribe, Lutheranism, the small catechism of Martin Luther is given to us to learn about the faith, but it's given to us in the question-and-answer format. What does this mean? How can water do such great things? And on and on. And the explanation to the small catechism, as of 2019, that edition, it has 374 further questions about our Christian faith. But to save the world today, I think we need to get out of the questions. They're important, and I'll talk about that in a second, but we need to get out of them. As Leonard Sweet says at the beginning of his book, Out of the Question, Into the Mystery, the way to save the world is not through more rules to live by, but through right relationships to live for. People are fast losing the art of being with one another. So it's not surprising that the number one problem in the world is people living disconnected lives. They are detached from God, from others, and from creation. People are losing the art of living with one another. And that's certainly very, very true. So we need to get away from the questions, that is, the rules that we are to live by. Because that's not about relationship. We need to get into the mystery of the relationship, the relationship between God and between each other. You know, mystery is the unseen. It is stepping out in faith, not knowing where your foot will land. Or as Martin Luther King said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take that first step. The mystery we are called into is the God-life relationship as Leonard Sweet puts it in his book. And you know, this isn't unique to the Christian era, by the way. 
Abraham was called into the mystery in the Old Testament. He is called to leave his homeland and to leave his father and to go to a place that he didn't know about, that he had never seen before. He didn't even know where it was. And so he did. And he was greatly blessed by God. In fact, one of the greatest things that you could say about Abraham was that he was the friend of God. And then we get to the point where Abraham is called into a deep mystery. Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. You know, if God came to me and told me to sacrifice one of my sons, (laughs) I'd have some questions. But Abraham doesn't question God. He steps out of the questions and into the mystery. That's because he had an incredible relationship with God. The mystery is that the Lord will provide. Now, did God really intend for Abraham to kill Isaac? I don't think so. I think that the story is not as much about a sacrifice as it is about faith. God wasn't questioning Abraham's faith. That's out of the question. God was revealing to Abraham the depth of Abraham's faith. That's the mystery of the Lord will provide with Abraham and Isaac. But there is a mystery of the Lord will provide with Jesus in us, you and me. Just as Isaac carried the wood on his back for the sacrifice, so Jesus carried the wooden cross to Calvary. Isaac asked his father, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Jesus asks his father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. A sacrifice was provided for Abraham and Isaac. A ram caught in a thicket would be the sacrificial animal for their worship. Jesus is our sacrifice that God provides to save us from our sins, from death itself, and from the power of the devil. In Jesus, our relationship with God is restored, and in Jesus, our relationship with each other in the church is established. And so Jesus tells us to go out into the world with what he, the Lord, provided and save the world through disciple-making and baptism So many questions to get out of. And there's nothing wrong with the questions. It is how we learn about the faith, especially in my tradition of Lutheranism. But there is so deep a mystery to step into. And that mystery has a name. The Lord will provide. That's a a few thoughts on Leonard Sweet's book, Out of the Question and Into the Mystery, uh, based on Genesis chapter 22 that I shared with a congregation recently. I want to thank Richard Souther for providing the music for the True Man podcast. And I want to remind you that over the course of this podcast, we've been replaying some of the uh, previous episodes, especially the uh, life of a man uh, that we have gone through. Uh, and, and you can uh, go back and listen to that, um, the different stages of a man's life that I put together a few years ago based on some work by another author that I really love, John Eldridge and his Way of the Wild Heart. And I I had replayed that a couple times uh, as a podcast and I took some vacation time and didn't have a chance to get through uh, some new material for the podcast. But if you'd like to go back and re-hear or re-listen to those uh, episodes or maybe hear them for the first time, uh, you can do that at Uh, the True Men website, as well as our place on Podbean, which is where we're hosted. We're thankful to Podbean for hosting the True Men podcast. Coming up, we're going to be talking about all kinds of different things on the podcast, about being a true man and about what that means at Easter time uh, when we celebrate in the Christian church the resurrection of Jesus. We're getting into uh, summertime uh, now where I live and That means a lot of baseball uh, for my boys. Uh, My sons are college athletes, uh, student athletes, um, but my oldest son is soon to be graduating from college, so I'm sure that's going to be a topic on the True Man podcast as well, the oldest moving out of the nest, getting on with his life that he has been training for. He's hoping for something to do with baseball. 
my youngest son who's just starting out as a student athlete in college and my middle son who is working two jobs right now saving money and really getting uh, on with his life after he has suffered many years with a debilitating disease called epilepsy. So those are going to be topics that are coming up on the True Man Podcast. If you'd like to suggest uh, some different topics that uh, you would like addressed on the True Man Podcast, just give us a, an email or send us a note uh, at our Facebook page or on our Twitter feed. Both of those links are at our True Man website. That is www.truemen, truemen.org. Join me again next time for the True Man Podcast. I'm Ed Blonsky. God's richest blessings to you.